You could say that secret societies, by definition, are certainly failing to serve their purpose if they're making their way onto this list. But thankfully for us, literature affords us the privilege of perspective, third person omniscient perspective, or at the very least, first person perspective with a little drizzle of unreliable narration. You see, there's nothing quite like turning the page of a book and being enticed by a strange symbol carved on a door or a letter delivered at midnight, a signet ring cast into a fireplace. Secret societies, man. Let's take a look at them. Hello, horror fans, what's going on? On and once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube. Top five scary videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finches. Today, we curiously take a look at the top five most mysterious secret societies in literature. Well, the clip. Put out fires. There's a name for a volunteer organization that puts out fires. Volunteer Fire Department. Volunteer Fire. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. Fire. Yeah. Volunteers fighting diseases, verbal fridge dialogue, vernacularly fastened door. Yeah, I can't exactly keep this up, but for the curious amongst you, of course, that clip was from the fantastic Netflix depiction of Lemony Snicket's even more fantastic series, a series of unfortunate events. Obviously, the entire premise of that series is based upon the mystery of a secret society, and yeah, it's pretty apt framing for this particular list. Although, the Netflix series is far superior to the film, and although he was brilliant, Jim Carrey's Count Olaf was certainly overshadowed by Neil Patrick Harris. Two thumbs up. Kicking off at number five, The True Knot. And while some of you may be scratching your head slightly at this entry, given the superseding events of the end of Stephen King's fantastic novel and sequel to The Shining, 2013's Doctor Sleep, I'm pretty certain that the properties of these terrifying psychics are the definition of this list. And why? Because really, this steam-hungry organization of vampiric psychics have obviously been scheming their way across the United States, if not the entire planet, ever since Jack Torrance went nuclear at the Overlook Hotel. And also, if we approach this from the assumption that all of King's work of fiction are connected via the Dark Tower, then the True Knot, from a meta perspective, are one of literature's most well kept secret societies. Um, let me try and explain. Throughout the events of King's 2013 sequel, Doctor Sleep describes a group of nomadic psychics roaming the country in RVs and caravans that feed off the life force of spiritually gifted children, and now adult Danny Torrance being one of their intended victims. These gifted children who demonstrate the shining seen in King's first novel exude a life force that they refer to as steam, which when consumed keeps them young and extends their lifespan beyond its natural limit. Yeah, sounds like the perfect recipe for some immortal or secret society, right? And it is. As their creed throughout the novel explains, we are the chosen ones, we are the fortunate ones, we are the true knot, and we endure. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure that's a checklist for what constitutes a secret society. Also, no spoilers because Doctor Sleep is awesome, and if you're not in the business of reading the novel, the film is out at the end of this month, so yeah, no excuse. Oh no, is it the end of next month? Next month. Swinging in at number four, Spectre. Whoa. Curveball. I bet you guys didn't expect to see James Bond slink his way onto this list, but we're not so much concerned with the man who killed the man with the golden gun, but more so his most devious of adversaries, the secret shadowy organization known only as Spectre. In many ways, again, this is the definition of a secret society, an organization of individuals on an international scale whose sole motive is to, well, who knows what their sole motivation is, but several things are certain. They make a boatload of money, they're straight up evil, and they're also incredibly stylish. I don't know about you, but what is it with evil, villainous organizations and extravagant architecture? We'll never know. Spectre, which forms the acronym for Special Executive for Counterintelligence, Terrorism, Revenge, and Extortion, is the definitive overarching villainous body of Ian Fleming's legendary James Bond series. And who better to lead them into chaos than the evil genius and supervillain Ernst Stavro Blofeld? Yes, the guy in the swivel chair with the monocle and the Persian cat. And yes, the guy that's been parodied by pretty much every crime comedy ever. But that's not the point, because at the start, he was awesome and terrifying, and I don't care what you think. First appearing in the 1961 novel Thunderball, Spectre would see many incarnations through Fleming's series, whilst always maintaining their malevolent aim of seemingly perfectly tempered chaos. Seemingly though, the most telling of their motivations was purely a personal one. It seems that the definitive supervillain Blofeld himself created one of the most intricate and evil organizations in literature simply because he had a grudge. Next up at number three, the esoteric order of Dagon. And I'm pretty certain that some of you are waiting for this entry. And truth be told, we cannot do this list without including this particular sect of scheming fishmen. In many ways, the esoteric order of Dagon is the quintessential secret society, particularly if we're including the ones that have a giant eldritch deity at the heart of their traditions. Yeah, a bizarre set of handshakes don't look so weird when compared to a bizarre set of handshakes with tentacles. 
Now that's a good question. Is a handshake still a handshake if it's with a tentacle? Let me know. You see, as so brilliantly designed in Lovecraft's 1931 novella, The Shadow Over Innsmouth, the esoteric order of Dagon were the ocean worshipping secret society founded by the bizarre and gill ridden Captain Obed Marsh. You see, as Captain Marsh found on his journey across the seven seas, there are ancient things that lurk in the water. After learning a ritual from the inhabitants of an unnamed Polynesian island on how to summon the Deep Ones, he took this newfound knowledge back to the town of Innsmouth, where he then summoned them and entered an eternal pact. It was a two way relationship at first, the inhabitants of the town would have a constant supply of fresh fish and the townspeople would have to offer them human sacrifices. Bit of a bum deal if you're asking me. Obviously as time went on this bizarre pact eventually led to the three oaths of secrecy, the final one being a human pledge to sire or bear a deep one child, perpetuating the fishy father Dagon worshipping race. Although they were technically destroyed, I'm pretty sure Lovecraftian fiction left this one open ended. I'm looking at you New Orleans. Coming in at number 2, the Talamasca. Ok now we're really getting into the heavyweight champion of literary secret societies because seriously, move over Illuminati, this is a cause for some concern, the Talamasca would like to have a word with you. Now hopefully if you've read Anne Rice's brilliant vampire series or even had your interest piqued by the 1994 film starring Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt then you'll know that beneath the comings and goings of our civilization exists a much older and much more permanent race of creatures, vampires and of course being a sort of secret society in themselves it goes without saying that the secret societies of a secret society are pretty damn secretive. And this is what I was irking toward with that opening statement of this list, it's important not to know these things when faced with the mysteries of literature. The Talamasca cast, sometimes known as the Order of the Talamasca or simply Talamasca, are a secret society set up during the early days of mankind with the sole purpose of keeping track of the paranormal comings and goings of the denizens of earth. I mean it goes without saying really, you wouldn't really let them sit there seething with impossible power for thousands of years right, witches, spirits, werewolves and of course vampires all fall within the ever gazing eye of the Talamasca. You see in an expert fashion Rice leaves just enough breadcrumbs of this organisation throughout her work and as they claim in Queen of the Damned, we watch and we are always there. In several cases it is even alluded to that the Talamasca have existed as an entity since before the birth of Christ with their origin strangely and even more perplexingly being tied to bees. Yeah you heard that right and your guess is as good as mine. Maybe we'll find out what's going on with the bees. Hopefully. And finally, coming in at number one spot, the Emir. <sighs> Guys, I'm sorry, but if it seems like I'm harping on about the King Killer Chronicles, that's because I am. And if you haven't got the message yet, read this remarkable series and let your mind work over time in trying to figure out just what the hell is going on. You see, Patrick Rothfuss, the creator of the King Killer Chronicles, demonstrated in both his first novel, The Name of the Wind, and his second, The Wise Man's Fear, a pretty remarkable knack of only giving us shapes of a story and leaving us to attempt to figure out the truth behind them. Again, I've mentioned it before, but part of the true charm of this series are the possibilities behind its many twisting tales. We're never truly given definitive answers as only illusions and the most mysterious of those grand illusions are the holy order of the Emir. And you know what, in many ways this is one of the only true secret societies in literature that we could put on this list because the truth is we know nothing about them, it's pure speculation as to how the Emir came to be, who they are and what their motivations were. We do know some things about them though which is a testament to how well woven this story is. The Emir were founded by the Telin church in the early days of the ancient Aturan empire. Their sole purpose was for the specially selected members to be equal part knight errand, a roaming purveyor of justice and a vigilante. And explicitly they were exempt from the law and their role was to enact their judiciary powers across the land for the greater good. The highest of their ranks, the Siridae were denoted by their tattooed hands depicting the Emir's symbol, a flaming tower. You see the whole point of this series is the pursuit of knowledge, the seeking of a secret and hopefully one day we'll find out just exactly who the Emir are. <laughs> Well there we have it horror fans, that is for the top 5 most mysterious secret societies in literature. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? Have any more to add then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Chris Harmon says, Jack have you seen the 2014 Australian zombie movie Wormwood? If you have, do you recommend it? Thanks. Hey Chris, I have indeed and yes I certainly would recommend it. Do you like Mad Max? Do you like zombies? then you will thoroughly enjoy Wormwood Road of the Dead. It's a good, it's a great movie. It's a really good movie. Why am I saying this? 
It's a great movie. Well, on that note, go watch Wormwood. And unfortunately, that's what we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.